for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Night. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the Masses. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Today's Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, 146 days into the new year. Only 219 days left. We are live from a bunker. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere. A total undisclosed location. But it is beautiful. How you doing? How you doing? Guys. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planets. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? All right. What a great week on the show. Last night, Danny Sheehan. Woo! Man. Some say show of the year. But you know what? I swear. I swear. I, I, and all that is holy. After every show, I will get an email. At least one that... Show of the year, man. That, 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 that was the show of the year. Wow. Last night, I was pretty good. But uh, I don't know, because tonight, live from Roswell, New Mexico, we have Don Schmidt. And I can look back over the years and say that after every show with Don Schmidt, I sat back and said, that's the best show I ever did. It happens every time. It's about to happen again tonight. And uh, we've got a lot to discuss uh, with Don uh, when he comes on. Um, the thing that, uh, uh, that I appreciate most about Don is, and, and until you meet him, you may not understand how cool Don Schmidt is, man, 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 that is a cool dude. Um, he has done it all. Um, his commitment to ufology and this community, second to none, second to none, but Cool, cool dude. I have uh, had the opportunity many times to just sit with Don and talk, and it's just it's just wonderful. He's just a cool guy, just a cool guy. And uh, tonight on the show, I'll show you how cool he is when I bring up blueberry cheesecake room service. I'm just saying. All right, tonight Don Schmidt. Last night, Danny Sheehan. Tonight, Don Schmidt. Tomorrow night, right here, Sean Stone. You guys are spoiled. You guys you guys are spoiled. It don't happen anywhere like it happens every single night here on Fade to Black. All right. Um, a couple of things. I had a very exciting uh, day today. Um, uh, I got a, a lot of things done, and uh, most of it was because it was just all distractions. It was all distractions. So uh, there you go. All right. There you go. All distractions. Had to get distracted today. I got distracted. I ended up getting 
a lot of stuff done. And um, a lot of things centered around also UFO Megacon and uh, and and figuring out things and getting the logistics going. I, I cannot believe that uh, today is the 25th. So in, geez, what is it? Is it 11 days? 11 days. 10 days. I will be in Laughlin, Nevada for UFO Megacon. I am, I'm just going to let all of you know, uh, the conference is June 6th through the 12th. I'm going to be arriving on the 5th. Okay. All right. It'll be a little bit, you know, a little bit after dinner time. But there will be time after that for dinner, drinks, and a casino. I'm just saying. I'll see all of you there. Let's hang out. It'll be a great night. Oh, man. Saturday night. Laughlin. A hotel, a casino, dinner, drinks, everything at our disposal. Come and hang out with us. It's going to be awesome. Um, the things that are set up and lined up for that week are just incredible. So uh, go and get your tickets and info. Everything is over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Laughlin UFO Megacon. That's all you got to do. Dot com. All right. Go and get your tickets and info. I spoke to the hotel today. And, uh, you know, I, you know I've, I've got things that I have to do there. We're like, man, we're we're almost sold out. That was the hotel. I'm talking about rooms. I have, they have another hotel next door, their sister building. But the Aquarius, where the conference is, that week, sold out. And uh, it, it's like, yeah, I, I think by now, this evening, it's sold out. And if you want to get your rooms, you better go. And you better go now. It's so cool. All right. So that's it. Follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. At J Church Radio, the sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. Come and hang out with us there. I was over on YouTube right before the show. I do that. I'm on Twitter all day. And then I can't wait to get over to YouTube and, and hang out. And I wanna know, I I wanna know who Phil the Stalker is. I wanna know who that guy is. I wanna know Phil the Stalker. Phil, if you're going to UFO Megacon, you need to come up to me and go, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm Phil the Stalker. I got this image of Phil the Stalker, right? <laughs> who, who is Phil the Stalker? Yeah, it's going to be great. And uh, anyway, I'm over here on YouTube. I got to, uh, I got, I got to get out of YouTube. I just get sucked in, man. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am mingling. I can jump in. I do have the ability to mouse around so I can goof off. But yeah, I want to I want to know who Phil the Stalker. Phil. <laughs> Phil the Stalker. Oh man. All right, where am I at? Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. All right, uh, let's get through this breaking news. Crazy, crazy breaking news day. Uh, and some of it I have to get to later. But today it was announced that Europe's top human rights court ruled yesterday that British mass surveillance and intelligence gathering practices breached human rights law. Now, in a partial victory for civil rights groups that had challenged the practices exposed by former National Security Agency contractor and whistleblower Edward Snowden. The court's 17 judges unanimously agreed that there wasn't enough independent scrutiny of processes used by British intelligence services to sift through data and communications intercepted in bulk resulting in violations of the right to privacy and freedom of expression. Che Guevara. That's what I'm talking about. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about right there. I couldn't believe this story today when it broke. And I wrote a bu bunch. I, I read, I wrote, I read a bunch of different uh, releases on this and looked at the pictures. It's an incredible story. There's a walrus right now. It's hanging out in the UK. Where's Wally? Well, that's his name. They're calling him Wally the Walrus. Wally. 
the iceberg hopping walrus is now 2,600 miles from his old home. The Arctic walrus probably fell asleep on a drifting iceberg and woke up in Ireland. How's that? That's pretty true. Hung out with Enya. And then turned up weeks later in Tenby, Wales. And is now appearing for an extended engagement in Cornwall, England. The walrus, known as Wally, is the first of its species to be spotted off of the coast of Cornwall, roughly 2,650 miles from his home in the Arctic Circle. Wally appeared off Cornwall. You see the pictures, man. <laughs> Tuscan all. In, in, in Padstow on April 20th, swimming alongside the boat of a group on a sea safari. And it's so funny. This, this one guy says, I thought it was a seal. And then his head popped out of the water and he had tusk. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Well, here we go. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Are you ready? The full moon tomorrow, May 26th will be the first total lunar eclipse since January of 2019. It will take the moon just under three hours to cross through the Earth's shadow. But the actual lunar eclipse itself will last for about 15 minutes. In the United States, the total eclipse will begin at 7, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the morning and end at 7.26 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, for me... That's uh, what? That's that's four eleven a.m. Do I set my alarm clock to go outside and see a total lunar eclipse? It's pretty cool. Uh, there you go. All right. No, I'm gonna miss it. You guys take pictures, send them to me. All right. Blue Origin it back in the news because they revealed someone is willing to fork over. Over $2.8 million as the highest bid so far in its auction for the last seat on the company's first flight with humans on board. Bidding began earlier this year for a seat on the new Shepard spacecraft. The company, founded by billionaire Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, unsealed the bids, revealing the highest bidder and is currently offering $2.8 million for the 10-minute flight. Now, I did the math. That's about $280,000 per minute or $8,000 per second. The company said it received more than 5,200 bids from 136 countries in the first round. The second round kicked off with an initial bid of $1.4 million, and the process will last until June 10th and conclude with a live online auction on June 12th. The company is targeting this July 20th for its first suborbitable sightseeing trip of its spacecraft. And this is truly a landmark moment for all mankind. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today. Mike Myers. Mike Myers is 58. Now, before you go and and I think Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay, I can I can go with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I the Pacer, the AMC Pacer. I can go with that, but not for me. Mike Myers, Inglorious Bastards. That's right. That's a great scene. Cillian Murphy today is forty five. Inception. He's got those crazy, those crazy green eyes. Ian Mc Ian McKellen today is eighty two. Lord of the Rings. Vocal God, and I'm saying it, Vocal God, Klaus Mina of the Scorpions, today is 73 years old. And Robbie Steinhardt of Kansas is 71. He was a guy that like played the flute. He had the long hair and the beard, stood in the background, but it, he was like the best singer in the band. I'm just saying, dust in the wind. That's what I'm talking about. Paul Weller today, Jam, is 63. Our dead guy's birthday today is, moment of silence, please, Hal David. 1921 to 2012, died at the age of 91. Hal, I'm not, I'm not saying this in any form of jokedom. I'm not trying to be a comedian. Hal, 
may have been the greatest lyricist that ever lived. Seriously. Listen to this. Alfie. You can almost stop right there. Raindrops keep falling on my head. This guy's in love with you. I'll never fall in love again. Do you know the way to San Jose? One of my favorite songs of all time. Walk on by. Right? What the world needs now is love. I'll say a little prayer for you. There's always something there to remind me. Jeez, one less bell to answer. That was Hal David. His list of songs, it would take me the whole show to read it to you. Incredible. Hal David. Hal died in the early morning hours of September 1st, 2012 in Los Angeles, California. He was 91 years old. Happy birthday, Hal. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous musician. On this day in history, OTD, 1977, say no more. Star Wars opens in theaters on this day. And the world changed. Fader fact. All right, here we go. I love this part of the show. I do. Fader fact. Harold Burgess built the world's largest treehouse in Crossville, Tennessee. After claiming that God told him to do so. When he finished, it was 97 feet tall and had 80 rooms. It took him 12 years to build, and it burned down in 15 minutes in 2019. That is your fader fact. Tonight, very special guest live from Roswell, New Mexico. Don Smith joins us. we got a lot to talk about. Big announcement happening tonight on the show. And then tomorrow night right here, Sean Stone is back. We're going to be talking about his new film, Best Kept Secrets. That is going to premiere at the UFO MegaCon in Laughlin, Nevada. Thursday night's another Fader Night. I promise this time around, this Thursday, Fader Night. Open lines all night long. All right. All right. Man, you guys... Yeah, that's it right there, Kaz. That's the treehouse. Is that? Oh, she posts the headline. World's largest treehouse burns to the ground. Are you calling me on my BS? I think that's what she, I think that's, that's what Kaz, Kaz had to check. Kaz Googled. She was like, man, world's largest treehouse burned down to the ground. This can't be right. Oh, it is. Ah, see, Kaz, you were surprised. You were surprised. All right. Here we go. Today is a big day. Rivermoonwellness.com. I like my coffee dark. <laughs> I do. I really do. I do. I do. Mm. All right. Earlier today, the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, was asked about the upcoming UAP report from the DNI. Wow. It was a moment. I caught it, too. I caught it. I, I actually caught it. Caught it when it happened. It was all over social media. And I remember, and I'm just, you know, and I happen, I never had the news on it. And I happened to have it on today. And that, that part was an accident. But um, I wasn't listening to music. And it was over on the screen. And I'm like, what's that, what's that reporter trying to ask? <laughs> no way, right? Well, it certainly went semi-viral. I thought it was going to take off more than it did. I Well, but anyway, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But when asked these, it was like two questions. It was one question. I'll get to that in a, in a minute. But part of her response was this, quote, we take our incursions into our airspace, both identified and unidentified aircraft, very seriously. End quote. 
Now, there was some grinning going on as the reporter said unidentified aerial phenomena, right? And and there was, and I, I thought there was going to be laughter. Everybody kind of toned it down pretty quick. And, uh, and I think that the reporter who asked the question or questions, it was kind of, you know, but, but kind of caught jam by surprise. Okay. But once the smiling stopped, she was prepared. Jan was totally serious. Okay. Just, I'm, I'm giving it to you straight. The reporter who I tried to chase down who it was and, and I still don't know at this point um, who it was. And if anybody can find out the name of that reporter, please let me know. But um, she asked the reporter said, and I'm nearly quoting here, you know, um, will the Biden administration uh, release the report to the public in full? Right. I was like, Oh my God. And I'm waiting for Jan's answer. I was like, Holy crap. Pisaki said that the potential, that's a quote from her, the potential release of the upcoming U.S. intelligence report on UFOs will be up to the office of the Director of National Intelligence. Holy crap. And then there was this gem. Now, I literally... Went back and watched this. Oh, man. I probably watched it 15 times today. But I went back and transcribed this myself. So I'm going to give this gem to you right now. Quote, we have a team that is actively working on a report. Certainly the safety of our personnel, security of our operations, our airspace are of paramount concern. Whether that is unidentified or unidentified aircraft. We don't discuss that publicly for a range of reasons, but certainly the president supports the ODNI for putting together a report and following through on that commitment, end quote. Holy crap. Now, there is a few things here that we got to uh, uh, take apart here for a second, but... For those of you that do not know what the ODNI is, it's not an agency, not in the traditional sense, but it stands for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Okay? Listen to me for a second. The Director of National Intelligence, or DNI, is a cabinet-level official required to serve as head of the United States intelligence community and to direct and oversee the national intelligence program. The DNI also serves upon invitation as an advisor to the president of the United States and the executive offices of the national security council and the Homeland security council about intelligence matters related to national security. The DNI is the one who produces the president's daily brief, that top secret document including intelligence from all of the intelligence community agencies that is given to the president each morning during breakfast. Well, Jan also said during the press briefing earlier today that it was up to the DNI if the report would be released to the public for, wait for it, disclosure. I thought that that was a pretty interesting choice of words. Seems like everyone right now, all the way to the Oval Office is on the same page here. She said disclosure. Now, after this press briefing, I sat back and I thought to myself, I said, hey, have I ever heard this discussed in any form from the White House press room before, like as in ever? And the answer is, well, no, I have not. Now, I may be wrong. And anyone can correct me or inform me on this. 
But I can't think of any time in my lifetime that UFOs, UAPs, whatever, have been used in an actual sentence at the White House on national TV. Think about that. It was a totally strange experience. Totally strange. But it happened. I watched. I listened. I rather enjoyed it, actually. And even though there was that comment, you know, we'll leave it up to the DNI to decide if the common people like you, you commoners, are important enough uh, to release it to. It's kind of a strange little, you know, little, you know, to kind of stick. But there was something else that was pretty cool. And I don't know if any of you caught it, but I did. And that was the reporter, when asking the question a second time, tried to say, almost said, almost slipped with UFO. Almost said aliens. Almost said E.T. I could see the wheels turning in the reporter's head. That's what the reporter wanted to say. She was trying to search for the right way to say it. You could feel it. And I think Jan was honestly waiting to hear it, too, by the way. She was like, right? She was, like, leaning in. But she landed on UAP. And that was it. I was like, "Uh uh-oh. Here we go. It's go time. Say it. Say it. But didn't happen. And, 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 yes, that would have been a totally historic moment. But it didn't happen. And it's just like anything else in ufology, man. Almost, right? Nope. (laughs) Man, we were this close, man. We were this close. So we wait. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Tonight, live from Roswell, New Mexico, the one and only Donald Raymond Schmidt. Right here on Fade to Black. We got a lot to discuss tonight, and we're going to get to a very special announcement which most of the show is going to be about. It is really, really cool. So we're going to do that. Want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, Sean Stone is here. And uh, Best Kept Secrets, his new film. We're going to discuss that. And then Thursday night's another Fader Night with open lines all night long on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet Race Hobbs. The Planet Race Hobbs. All right, meals, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. This is Jimmy Church, and I'll be at the UFO Megacon this June 6th through the 12th, 2021 in Laughlin, Nevada. The Laughlin UFO Megacon is unique. It's seven days of education and disclosure. It's unlike all other UFO conferences. The Laughlin UFO Mega Conference specializes in bringing you new people, offering new information and disclosure. All of this is offered at prices so low you can actually afford to be there. For instance, Seven night hotel packages, one or two people, start at just $320 inclusive. Education and disclosure is why the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference exists. Join us for all seven days or a half a week or just a day or two, but join us. Go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. Register now. The only thing keeping you from being with all of us is you. Just go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder. 
but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. This is the only way forward. This is Made to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, folks. It's trembling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Get the tea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years, and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's get the tea.com. Get the tea.com. The tea that makes you go. Fader Knots. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Hold on. I want to get this tweet out really quick. There you go. Ron, check your Twitter, bro. Post that. I've got zero patience. I don't even want to know your reply. Read the tweet, Ron Hudson. All right. Tonight, live from Roswell, New Mexico, Don Schmidt is with us. And uh, we are going to announce the launch of the International Coalition for Extraterrestrial Research, ICER. This is a nonprofit organization. You know what? Before I even get to that, I want I want Don to tell me. I could tell you. That's not any fun. Now, we all know that uh, Don Schmidt is the former director of the J. Allen Hynek Center for UFO Studies in Chicago, where he served as director of special investigations for 10 years. Now, something you may not know, Don has been doing this for 45 years. 
That's part of it. Don also has an autographed photo of him and Galileo. That's right. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black the one and only Don Schmidt. Don, how you doing, man? I was all of two years old when I started. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, so man. good to be with you again, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> now, I just had some uh, blueberry cheesecake sent up to your room. Oh, uh, oh so, yes. So if it, uh, <laughs> And I'll be on the radio. So if I have to dash away quickly, you know why. Just invite him in. Just have him come in and join in on the conversation. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Don Schmidt, my friend, it is so great to hear your voice. Um, uh, I, I, I just can't express enough uh, to the audience that uh, our friendship that I treasure, our conversations that we've had over the years, uh, you're one of the best, the brightest, the funniest, the coolest people that I know, and you happen to be part of the UFO game. So on behalf of the UFO community, as we get into this, thank you for everything over the years. You're, you are truly the absolute best. Thank you so much, Don. And I, I well, don't don't I, say anything. Don't say anything. Just keep okay. it. Put that in your pocket. <laughs> Let's leave it right there. Now, Don. Um, uh, thank and, you. And, thank you so much. I'm very humbled. I, and and it just and I, I seriously mean it. We've had so many great moments over the years, and they just they absolutely. Just so, and so right cool. right back at you, my friend. I mean, uh, I think we're. We're, we're, we're close enough that we'd be right there for one another if the case should warrant. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, that that is true. And I do want to thank Don for sending me this box of fine hair care products uh, that came in the mail today. And, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, okay, Don, okay, Don, Don. We we have to yeah that you it, it, yeah, and if you peel off the fake label it says Nair underneath yeah so. it does it does it does I'm gonna be bald tomorrow you got even <laughs> you got even Don um, but in all seriousness you must be we're gonna get to Icer in, in in just a minute but you've been at this for so long now and where we are today. You must feel pretty good. This is the craziest time that uh, we have ever been through in the world of UFOs, and hopefully it's going to have a good ending uh, pretty soon. But did you ever expect it to elevate to this level? Not with as many state officials that are speaking out or as though reading from all the same script as to their t talking points. And that's unusual we've never seen this before um i was I went with heineck i was there at times when he'd be rushed to wgn in chicago and there was an eminent announcement coming from washington and they wanted him immediately there for you know a quick response and uh, one the first time was with the ford administration then after that with the carter administration and we just became accustomed to just uh, watching the old shell game that it was just a bluff. It was just uh, more of taunting us, rubbing it in our faces, so to speak. But uh, now when you have a Navy, a Navy task force that is preparing a report and then submitted as far as before Congress by the end of next month, and we can only guess based on what they've already acknowledged and the Pentagon chiming in as well, I for one and for any of your listeners who don't realize that the different branches of the military are very much in competition with one another. The, uh, and the, I think the other part of it, yes, and you're absolutely right. And I just interrupted you, Don, but um, you had a very busy day today, and, and I understand that. But uh, earlier today, as far as I know, Jan Psaki from the White House press room talked about ufos with the press yes what yes. what is going and now do you remember and i want you to think about this do you remember ufos being discussed in the press room at the white house ever never 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 i'll give you a quick uh, you know example when uh Heineck had long finished with project blue book he had already started the center for ufo studies and it was during the, the Ford administration. And originally, his congressional representative was none other than Donald Rumsfeld, who then went on to serve as Secretary of Defense with the Ford administration and then the George W. Bush uh, presidency. So Heineck was in Washington 
Gerald Ford, president, and he thought he would stop by, have a, a private conversation with Rumsfeld. And he sat down with him in his office and asked, or, and he explained, he said, you know, I've given you 20 years of my life. I've devoted as far as all my time and effort to help you essentially come up with a, a, con- a resolution as to the UFO mystery. And you have st- stonewalled me, and I did not have access to all the data. I believe I have every right to know the truth. Was I just chasing ghosts, or is there something really behind all this? And I'll never forget Heineck when he explained the way Rumsfeld got up from behind his desk, walked over, leaned down over the top of the sitting Heineck, pointed his finger in his face and went, you have no right to know. So it's like we've been there, and then we have the rug pulled out from beneath us, and it's like, okay, were we just dupes? Did we just fall once again for this old, you know, smoking mirrors, you know, don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain, that type of thing? Or is this going to be the genuine article? Well, the way they are painting this mosaic right now, it's like everybody and anybody who has an opinion is speaking in total favor. I mean, that the phenomenon exists. We're dealing with a technology beyond our control. They defy the law of the physics, the laws of physics. But the one thing that concerns me, Jimmy, is that they're, they're behaving as though this is a new phenomenon, that this has only recently become a threat. And the overemphasis on the word threat. And so I ask, where have they been in all these years, since the 40s, 50s, 60s, and on, and behaving as though none of the past history even matters, or that it doesn't even exist. The why, though? Why the change in climate? Why now? Yes. Yes, exactly. Why now? What uh, was there? Just imagine. And we, we, we both remember, like, the old Thomas Mantell case over Godman Air Force Base in January of 1948, and the pilot that went down in pursuit of what they thought was a UFO, and they explained the way as a skyhook balloon. Okay, fine. But nonetheless, just imagine, should there have been a situation involving a, a crash, a disaster involving a pilot or something else, that would be the type of thing that would force their hand, and especially if there were surviving witnesses, and especially if there were whistleblowers. But it's like, okay, we've been dealing with this for every day for the last couple years. And, and Harry Reid, that they had the commission as far as that ATIP working on this since 2004. And, okay, well, we didn't know about it, but what necessitated it back then, for example? So one of the things I believe that is behind all this is the fact that uh, Senator Reid, who's not well, I mean, he is uh, suffering from cancer, that... Maybe there is some urgency on the part that they feel he deserves some answers. They may be just as much in the dark as we are, and they're going to give him a bone or two. Do you, that's just one speculation. That's one. Do you have a second, or can I give a second speculation? Please, please, and then I'll give a third. Yeah, yeah okay, let's, let's trade. I'm wondering if... They are trying to, and I'm talking about the establishment in general. That could be uh, politicians, that could be lawmakers, that could be the White House, but it also includes uh, the DOD and the Pentagon um, and the agencies. Right. That they may be trying to get out in front of something that they are not in control of. What that may be, I don't know, right? A spacecraft is approaching Earth, it's going to be here in two years, right? I don't know. It, it yes, could be, yes, yes. Uh, but maybe they are just trying to control the situation. It's something that is not in their control, and this is the best way to deal with it at this time. That could very well be the case. But why is the Air Force so strangely quiet right now? We're talking about, you know, the arbiters of the cover up all this time. And when I had mentioned earlier about, you know, all the branches of the service being in competition. I think a great example was during Desert Storm when uh, Storman Norman Schwarzkopf, you know, chief of staff of the Army during the war, 
at his daily briefings complained each and every time that they didn't know what page the Air Force was on and the Navy. They were didn't know if they were to march into downtown Baghdad because the Air Force had declared total air supremacy, and yet the Navy was still launching tomahawks into the city. So it was a you know a modern example of where they're not singing from the same choir book. And so I question, I'd, I'd like to believe, Jimmy, that it's the Navy finally saying we've allowed the Air Force to speak on our behalf on this topic for over 70 years and our pilots just can't keep you know continue continuing as far as having these encounters having these experiences and that we are now going to treat this as the navy should have from the very beginning Mm -hmm. and we're going to allow them to speak out we're going to allow them to you know as far as go public with their experiences if it indeed does not threaten national security and basically damn the air force uh, you know, another good example is when the Air Force Project Blue Books were declassified in 1977. Over 13,000 cases, and it was, well, where, where are all the Navy cases? You could count them on one hand. And now it's the and opposite. the Navy certainly well, has... Uh, right. Don, Don, and, and today it's the opposite. You, right, you know, right. I, I find it very strange, and I uh, I can't quite wrap my head around it, but... Where is the Air Force right now? It seems to be only the Navy, and it can't be. You know, that we have the Army, we have the Marines, we have the Coast Guard, right? Absolutely. Nobody else Absolutely. is chiming in right now. This is just a, a, a United States Navy situation. It's only United States Navy pilots that are seeing stuff, or the Air Force doesn't want their pilots to say anything. Why aren't they getting involved Certainly, the Air Force, well, we know what they've uh, been dealing with for the last 70 years, but all of a sudden, it's a United States Navy issue, and I don't, I don't get that part of it, Don. Well, now, granted, uh, I, I mean, we've always suspected the Navy just because they would have global surveillance, global coverage, mm-hmm. whereas our Air Force, you know, had very restricted, you know, airspace sovereignty as far as uh, in our country and then some of our allies, that type of thing. So... If, uh, if the Air Force had over 13,000 cases leading up to 1969, we can only imagine what the Navy may have accumulated up to today. So and that's where, if the Navy comes up shorthanded next month, then I'm really going to be questioning as to what is at stake here, because they should have truckloads of documentation. Now, what do you expect? And not only including UFOs, but also USOs, underwater, you know, unidentified objects no doubt no doubt um i ask everybody the same thing friends family guests on this show i ask everybody the same thing what do you what do you expect not what you hope for but what do you expect that report to uh have in it uh the, the, this i'm sure i mean this is almost becoming a cliche but uh the disclosure with a small d in the sense that there's something there we are encountering these unknowns on a regular basis. They clearly are intelligently controlled. They certainly demonstrate superior flight characteristics and at times even, you know, break the laws of physics as we know them, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But we're on it. Mm-hmm. We're on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like the classic, you know, police gumshoe type of, you know, detective, um, whether he is working on the case or not. I'm on it. I'm on it. And it always you know, cast aside any further questioning or aspersions because, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll report, I'll get back to you when I have something. And that could be drawn out for the next 75 years. So I'm concerned that, but it would be a major, major breakthrough just they're admitting there is something there because the Air Force has denied this for 75 years. The, they deny that there's anything there. That's right. And uh, last night I had Danny Sheehan on the show, and yes, he yes. said something that uh, I I thought about a little bit. You know, it was more like a Pandora's box. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep this sealed up. And but he said something last night when I asked him the same question uh, that kind of stopped me in my tracks, Don. And he said, "You know what? They're just going to ask for more time." There's yes, going to be yes, no report yes. in June. 
They're going to ask for more time, and they're going to get it. And they, and they will get it because it takes them both. It takes all of them. The, the Marco Rubio, you know, the, the Intel subcommittee, oh, it takes all of them off the hot seat right now. That's right. And, and, and as you probably have heard, who already has asked for an extension but the Air Force? The Air Force already has asked for more time. Now, we remember when the late Congressman Stephen Schiff had to enlist the General Accounting Office, then Congress's own investigative body, with a document search that he went to all the branches of the military as well as departments of intelligence, and they were to do a document search, anything and everything pertaining to the Roswell incident of 1947. And they all came up empty-handed for the GAO to then you know, draw the conclusion, hey, all the records were destroyed. Everything for the first atomic bomb base in the world back in 1947, somebody decided to burn all the records and the press walked away and went well sounds good enough to me and because they were also taken off the hook because they didn't have to do another minute's worth of effort the general accounting office which has tremendous power and authority right tremendous absolutely absolutely so they come in and they want uh bills what did you spend money on uh, 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 the tapes, the audio, um, any any film records, any paper trails, anything and everything. It's the General Accounting Office. Nobody had a receipt. Nobody received any recordings. Nobody signed for any documents. There was no accounting whatsoever with anything to do with Roswell. And you got to step back, Don, and go, That's that's a load of crap. That's an impossibility. Of course, of course, That's an impossibility. Absolutely. And at the time that the base in Roswell was conducting daily bomb drop exercises, they were having B-29s that occasionally crashed in the area just outside, you know, the city limits. There were fatalities. Families had to be notified as far as there was additional expenses, as far as recovery and retrieval operations. So they were constantly shifting money and uh, you know, conducting what looked like training exercises that all happened at the same time of the recovery operation for the craft of unknown origin, as it was called. And that is how they disguised everything. And the fact that they went through that effort and then for the GAO to be told, but there's absolutely no accounting, not a record. And you were absolutely quite accurate, Jimmy, when you said as far as not a bill, not a receipt, not an accounting record of anything for the first atomic bomb base in the world at that time. And it's like, how convenient can we get? We'd see that in a movie, we'd walk out because it was too predictable. They said uh, there was one comment before we head to the break here. Um, and, of course, we're going back now uh, 25 years. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, 25 years uh, when that report was released. Uh, but there was, uh, there was this comment from them. Um, we had the records, but they were destroyed. Right. Wait, a minute. Right. Wait a minute. All. All the records. Right? All the records. <laughs> All the records. And the point being... It wasn't just the records from the Army. And then, to throw in quickly the red herring, that the, uh, the then, and actually that was the 1994, so we're now talking 27 years, when they came out with that report. And, and then the GAO report right after, and actually the GAO, GAO, GAO report came out right after that. But Sheila Windhall, Secretary of the Air Force at that time, she puts out a statement and she absolves all Air Force personnel of any oaths of secrecy that they had pertaining to Roswell, that they were free to talk. They were free to go out to the press and say, I was there. Let me tell you what I actually was involved with. And not a member of the press picked up on the fact there was no Air Force in July of 1947. This was an Army incident. How does the Air Force absolve the Army of a security oath? Most people don't remember um, Roswell. It wasn't Roswell Air Force Base. 
It was Roswell Army Airfield. Airfield, correct. That correct. is what it was called. It and, was and, an army. You know, the, the best, the best, I, I'll never forget this. I was in my car at Elisa's. And I get this uh, uh, thing, and I'm I'm reading it. But anyway, um, on my computer inside of Elisa's, and I see the it's on CNN or, or something that uh, Roswell case closed. The report has just come out. Right, right. So now right. I go and I, this I remember it like it was yesterday, Don. I read the report, and it says, and especially those of us that have been at this for a while. Back then, I read everything. I, I just I absorbed, you know, this is before the internet. I had the books. I had all of your books. You know, I had everything. And, Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, and it said it was a Project Mogul balloon and, and dummy. And I'm walking to my car, and I'm thinking about this. I'm like, wait a minute. That was 1954. That was, you know, and I remember, and everybody in the UFO community knew this. And by going there, we all knew that that was just a bold-faced lie. They didn't even have Correct. their facts straight. They go and they state this, and they didn't even go and check dates on their own projects when these dummies were thrown out of the planes, what year that was. You know, it was... Uh, what seven seven years after Roswell? Seven years, seven years after Roswell, correct. It it blew my house. And they get away with it because they play off of the ignorance, especially of the mainstream media, who in many ways have been willing accomplices regarding this subject from the get go, because they actually would have to get out and conduct some independent investigation on their own, and um, they always, you know. You know, take the the point of least resistance, and and that happened to be hey balloon sounds good to me. I the remember first driving bomb squadron in the world. You know, misidentified a weather balloon as a flying saucer. First and only time in history that has ever happened. I remember driving home. I'm on the 405 freeway. Just just they're lying to us again, man. They're lying. <laughs> I just remember being so angry. And it was just so blatant. I thought, man, this, they're going to uncover this. Now we're going to get to the truth. You know, and, and you know, again, uh, 25, uh, that was, uh, that was 97? 97 was the, uh, when, uh, just before the 50th anniversary, that's when they came out with the anthropomorphic wooden crash dummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, take. And the people laughed at the press conference. <laughs> Let's take our break. It was that ridiculous. <laughs> Don Schmidt. Okay, when we come back, we got a big announcement that we're going to uh, announce. We're going to announce a big announcement, uh, Don. I just said announce an announcement four times in two sentences. All of that and much more. Don Schmidt is our guest. I forgive you. <laughs> this is, thank you. This is Faded Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. 
or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Katie and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> we are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Don Schmidt is here live from Roswell, New Mexico. What is he doing in Roswell? Well, we're about to find out. And uh, Don, uh, this announcement, um, as I, I got the press release and everything and, 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 and took a look at this, I thought, well, how exciting. The timing couldn't be better. And everybody is now probably wondering what the heck we're talking about. So let's, and, and I mentioned it earlier, uh, ICER, the International Coalition for Extraterrestrial Research. What is it? Well, it uh, had its beginnings in China, of all places. And I had been to China on three occasions. And it wasn't with the plan of creating any type of an international uh, a collection of researchers or investigators until we were invited to uh, put on a proposal in Moscow. And we had a five continent as far as meeting. And we spent the better part of three days, you know, it was essentially banging out a project that we could put together this coalition. 
how we would search out and select, you know, the, the best academic and, and, and scholars and scientists and researchers in the field from these respective countries and, and set a goal of 30 countries that we then potentially would be recognized by UNESCO with the United Nations. And we'd also be able to then be invited to present research papers at the UN. And so it took us the better part of three years. And we were, you know, and that's the wonderful thing about Zoom, because we were with translators and, you know, each week, every other week, and meetings that went on for three hours, and basically just putting this all together. And so long before there was any talk of this Navy task force and the report before Congress, and, um, you know, it, it, it just happened to be totally coincidental on that, on that part. But we just felt that we're beyond investigation. We don't need to keep, you know, chasing lights in the skies any longer. If we haven't at least drawn certain conclusions by now, and then to hear these researchers in these other countries, you know, talking about how we need to cooperate and we need to work together for the first time. Uh, J. Allen Heineck, this, was, this would be a dream come true for him because this is unprecedented. The idea of nearly 30 countries are finally saying, they're stating to the world, we have already concluded and we accept the fact that we are dealing with an intelligence off the earth that we still have no answers as to where they are from, what their intentions are, if they are a threat or not, but we need to come together and make those determinations and in the process educate the people as to this being a global phenomenon. It was like Maria Bartnola on Fox a few weeks ago when she was talking to John Ratcliffe, former director of national uh, intelligence. And she was just dumbfounded when he said that there were sightings in other countries. So once again, you know, our keepers at the gate who know nothing of this subject, well, it's time that we once again jump in the driver's seat and talk to the public, tell the public, as far as the accumulated research that we have from country after country after country and present it to the world. How is it, um, how is it going to be handled? Uh, uh, what, what is the actual structure of ICER? Is there, well, let, uh, let's actually break that down for a second. Uh, you must have physicists, right? You, you, astronomers, yeah. scientists, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, academia. Um, I don't know if there's politicians involved or ex-military. I don't know. I'm going to ask you all of those questions no, now. No, but also, but also lawyers, because right. we tend, we intend to also hit FOIA very hard, especially for example, post uh, World War II Germany, where they essentially did not have a government. I mean, we they essentially were being uh, run, and they were already split in half by Russia and the United States. And yet, all of their UFO incidents fell into that, you know, black hole, so to speak. Well, we would assume that they would all have been transferred, especially over to the American side of the equation. And that being Project Sign, Grudge, Blue Book, that type of thing. That they were, man the United States was managing German UFO reports post-World War II. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... When we've sat down and we've talked to German officials, and they would just love a chance to go through a good dozen years that are now just vacant, that it's a, a mystery as to where all those case reports are. So we're going to go after, you know, after that, for example. And one of the other things that we would like to you know, get into is that what, what we're not hearing, just imagine, even if the Navy task force and the report that Congress then will release to the public. And they have some form of disclosure. There is absolutely no talk about protection of possible whistleblowers, people that would now like to come forward, people within the military, for example, 
uh, uh, you know, highly educated individuals working in national laboratories and with NASA and, you know, Boeing and Lockheed and, and so on. And it's not that ICER or any group would be able to provide that, but we would then, you know, force that issue. We would push for that, that there needs to be representation of, of possible witnesses on that behalf. And then certainly the push uh, and then coming from that many countries for congressional hearings that really have never uh, taken place thus far. The idea that Congress has never subpoenaed a, a UFO witness to ever testify under oath. It's, and to me, yeah. that's almost unforgivable. It's, it's very surprising when we start to look at things like that. And I was wondering what uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, was going to do and how they were going to approach this. Um, let's speak hypothetically for a second. Let's suppose, or presuppose, <laughs> that they actually get the report, right? DNI shows up, uh, DOD is there, maybe some members of the Joint Chiefs, and this, you know, and all the branches of the military have been contacted, and here's the report, and they push this thing forward, and it's there for review. Does the Senate Intelligence Committee at that point do what they're supposed to do? Call witnesses, right? Are they going to, and let's say that they do, Don, right? David yes. Fravor's up there, right? Alex Dietrich, uh, very cool, by the way, and I'm glad that she has well, come Louis, forward. Luis, Luis Elizondo. Uh, and, Lou Elizondo, and, uh, right, right. Uh, right? Okay. Right. That would be the obvious, um, but would they do that? And then let's say they do. Do they bring any civilians forward? Do they bring Travis Walton, right, to, to, to Capitol Hill? Do they bring, uh, you know, everybody from Rendlesham? Do they bring right, them forward? Right, right, right. You know, you know, and, and Calvin here Parker from, from Pascagoula. Uh, bring I mean, Calvin I mean, Parker, right, and, yes, and bring in yes. uh, other aspects to this because it's not just a U.S. Navy. Uh, I mean, if they're really trying to get to the bottom of this, they should hear from from all sides, you know, and and from all countries, if possible. That's right. That's right. That's right. And why uh, why not do that if you're truly interested in in not only getting answers uh, for who and what, but we need to push this one step further. It's not. Um, uh, that, but let me finish uh, really quick yes. because your important your opinion is so important. I feel that uh, DNI and the DOD are trying to make this an adversarial situation, i.e. Uh, Russia and China. And then that's, that's the angle that they're going at. Everybody wants to tiptoe around UFOs, right? Everybody wants to outside of our solar system, not made on this earth, which is the question that everybody is asking except for where it needs to be presented. And I don't, I don't get that part Precisely. of it, Don. No, 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 I could not agree more. And the fact that we both have had discussions with uh, high-ranking officials in the government, and they are more ignorant on this subject than the media is. And if Rubio and the others, if they truly have been you know, receiving briefings on a regular basis, at least that... Puts, places them in a position that when the Navy finally presents its report, they can judge whether they've been on the same page all along. They will have at least a foundation to base a final judgment on. And if they then call, well, we need to have hearings. We need to, you know, have witnesses testify. We need to look at this from not only the position that we're dealing with a national threat, but that we are dealing as far as with a culture shock that we have to be prepared that no different than as they should have been back in 1947 by announcing they had actually captured a flying saucer that they did not anticipate the ramifications and as a result I, I, I couldn't agree more they are tiptoeing around this and acting like this is just uh, you know old news we've been there and uh, we're going to treat it again. We're going to brush it off as, yes, we're investigating. We're looking into it. 
And that will once again be the extent of it. But you're absolutely correct that unless there are hearings, unless witnesses have an opportunity to present their own cases regarding this, it's going to be the same song and dance, I'm afraid. Well, if, if, if DNI says, well, it's not the Russians, it's not China, and it's not us, then the question needs to come from the Senate Intelligence Committee straight up. Well, then what are we talking about here? Are we talking about an extraterrestrial civilization? Right? Let's cross that line. Let's discuss this now rationally. Yes. yes. Right? Because and if there's no... Why, con- Go ahead. And, and why haven't we been briefed on this matter for all these years? And again, why have they been ignoring it for the past 50, 60 years? All of a sudden, now it becomes a threat? Yes, the so very, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why has this been covered up for all this, and for whose benefit? And now to plead ignorance after all this time. Again, just imagine, you or I, anyone, just imagine, and here, like the, the COVID vaccinations are an example. Imagine if these, uh, the vaccinations would have taken over 70 years to develop. I'd want my money back. And they've been investigating the UFO phenomenon for all this time, and they still are totally in the dark about it. Right. And now, here's the deal. Um, There has been a few groups that have formed in the past. Of course, we have NICAP and and, and KUFOS and uh, And MUFON today. Right, right. right. But, But what is different about ICER and their approach? That it is an actual coalition of over 25 countries. The fact that we have representation in Russia, throughout Europe, throughout South America, through Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Canada, Mexico. And the point being, this has never happened before. And I think that in itself is going to demonstrate to you know the global media that not only is this a global phenomenon, but that we are all facing the same conundrum, that we are all facing as far as this same elusive phantom. And the point being that these other countries, as we have had discussions over the last three years, there has been this total reliance on the you know, American military, that we were in charge, that we may possibly even had one in our possession, that we, if any country, had answers. It's, it's, it's a classic uh, situation in that whenever we would hear, I would hear of a foreign case, the first question I would typically ask, were there American suits involved? Mm-hmm. And I don't care if it was West Island, Australia, or Zimbabwe, Africa. There were American suits there. Why? What placed us in the driver's seat? I personally am convinced is because we captured one. We got one. We had, we had the wreckage, and it became a major bargaining chip. You know, we're reversing the technology. We're going to have a fleet of flying saucers before you know it. Big bargaining chip. And here we are all this time later, and either there has been this secret, you know, technology all this time that may, you know, possibly be announced. I, I, and I, too, question, is this going to, you know, somehow connect the Space, uh, the space Force? that they're going to announce something in regards to that's why we created Space Force, because we're, you know, we're dealing with something, you know, off the planet, and we need to find out what it is. It's, well, thanks for finally, you know, right, waking right. up. Now, it, it, are there going to be, what you're not going to do is investigate, right? No. That, no. That, that's it's the one thing be, that separates you from, from everybody else right there. Right, because we see that uh, just the public awareness programs be established and, uh, you know, just the, the profound issue of, you know, of contact and its global implications, that it would be the first time that that, and we know there, there were hearings already at the U.N., but that was just a matter of them inviting speakers such as Heineck and Belay and Dr. David Saunders and so on. But this would be 30 countries that would be provided as far as a forum 
to testify on their each their individual respective situation. Well, the Brazilian Air Force, for example, is talking to our representative and has already demonstrated that they want to cooperate. They, I, I think I would like to also believe that a, a number of, of people that have essentially been following orders, they've been doing, maintaining the status quo, that we will provide them with a, a sympathetic listing ear as to how can we work together and power in numbers, and in this case, power in countries. One of the most daunting things I can think of uh, is piercing the veil of the United Nations. You know, if, I, I have no idea uh, how you would approach that and what kind of juice you would have, you would have to have to, to get recognition. How, how, do you, how do you go about that? You, you secure representation, How? whether it be uh, San Marino or Liechtenstein or any other country. They make emotion, oh. and then at least it would come to it, – but it is I, – I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with you, Jimmy. It's a long, drawn-out process. We are willing to uh, face that, and we have already taken the initial steps. And the first one being that once we are 30 countries – they at least have to recognize us in that capacity. That's UNESCO. And beyond that, then we would start the, the, the procedure. It could take years, but we have to start it, and we are willing to start that. It, if you just mentioned Valet and Heineck, uh, you know, when they did that, Lee Spiegel, right? That, yes, yes, Lee Spiegel, correct. That, that was Grenada. Right, that wasn't yes, the United yes. Kingdom. That wasn't Spain or France or Brazil or the United States or Russia or, or China. The United States, right, right, right. It was Grenada, you know. Yes, and so yes. you, you may be that's that's an interesting approach that you would go through uh, another country that would be willing to sit down and talk and then go and take this. Uh, to UNESCO and the United Nations. Very interesting approach. Okay. Do you have, it's, now you said Liechtenstein. Well, let me, uh, of all yes, the let me quick to give you, yeah, one more example. Sure. And this was something that we, uh, you know, we originally saw even with the Roswell investigation. The irony that we were hearing of foreign sources, and for example, when Pravda, the state run newspaper in Russia, released a report around 1990, about Roswell, that Stalin did not believe the balloon explanation that hmm. the Americans you know, presented. Right. And that he was very concerned that because it just happened to take place just a couple hours away from where the first atomic bomb was detonated, that it was a continuation on that theme. So he sent... You know, he, you know, he selected specific spies to go in, and I want an answer. I want a report by the end of the year. Well, whatever that report was, and the, 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 at least the wording was such that what was in Pravda, it described it that it was not of American origin. It did not appear to be an immediate threat but they recommended a top priority investigation by the Academy of Science. And then it listed all the scientists, all the Russian scientists assigned to present a full report to Joseph Stalin. And so I kept thinking, wouldn't that be the ultimate irony that we would come up with any type of documentation or proof that Roswell was anything but American, that it was, if anything, if, if anything it was truly something extraordinary. And to do it outside of America, it's not in not, you know, a, a betrayal or any type of uh, unpatriotic uh, act on my part. But the point being, hey, it's our own government that keeps slamming the door in our faces. And I'm sorry, I don't go through a door. I go around it and I'm going to do whatever it takes to come up with the answers. That's not unpatriotic. That means you're a citizen of planet Earth. That's all that means. Yes. I, I'm, I'm cool and with that. I, I'm cool with that. Demanding the truth. Demanding the truth. Right. Now, um, when we come back after the break, uh, one of the questions that must be on the minds of uh, the audience, and this is the way that I always think, 
you know, that black and white mindset, which is, okay, this is great, but who do you got, right? Who's on the team, <laughs> right? Right, right. <laughs> This is a lot of work uh, to put together, and you must have a structure, and you must have some names that you can name drop. So I want to go yeah. through. I want to go through all of that next, and uh, the other part. Uh, and I want to discuss this after the break, but we can talk uh, briefly about it now. Um, none of us are getting any uh, younger, and I'm hoping that in my lifetime, you and I were talking about this subject earlier today. That I hope that in my lifetime, in what time that I have left, that I can start to get the answers that I seek. That's been your yes. mission too, as well. Do you think Absolutely. you're? Do you think you're late in the fourth quarter here to to scoring a touchdown? Well, we certainly are. As to uh, Roswell, as far as witnesses, for example, we're on the one inch line right now. The Undertaker has won all that accumulated information that has been taken to their graves from witnesses we failed to you know get statements from before they were gone. Sure. You know, just the uh, the um, just the level of finality to death. The idea that it's gone forever, gone forever. And so, yes, I think that's what this provides us with an opportunity. But that's where we make the mistake of just sitting back right now, twiddling our thumbs and thinking, well, we're going to wait for them to once again present us with the truth. And I'm sorry, their track record is dismal. Right. And so we feel we need to you know, turn the thumbscrews to get them to act on whatever report, whatever they present us. And I agree with you. The best thing would be, okay, we want witnesses. We want people to testify on their oath, and we're going to set up committee hearings as far as, as, far as on Capitol Hill, and we're going to at least provide people with an opportunity to present us with their best evidence. Well, what we can't do, we can't take our eye off the prize, number one. We're very close to getting, you know, pushing that ball over the goal line. We are right there. But what the man wants is for us to be distracted, you know, to get yes. tired, yes. to not get, because they are not going to do it on their own. They need pressure and they need pressure from us. And that pressure has got to be unrelenting. Totally, totally. And so. Uh, I'm sure there may be people who are listening tonight and they're snickering. Oh, they're, they're talking about another club, you know, that type of thing. Right, right. But no, we're talking about a very proactive, and the point being that this is unprecedented that we have this many countries that are now willing to say, let us finally put our money where our mouth is and let's get things moving in our direction. We are going to try to take charge of our own destinies regarding this subject and stop relying on official dumb to take us by the hand and tell us what they think we want to know. You said official dumb. That was good, Don. That was good. Yes, you didn't even, yes, you didn't even yes. catch that. I did. I'm, I'm glad you picked up. <laughs> Don Schmidt is our guest. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Cartonel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I'll be at the UFO MegaCon this June 6th through the 12th, 2021 in Laughlin, Nevada. The Laughlin UFO MegaCon is unique. It's seven days of education and disclosure. It's unlike all other UFO conferences. The Laughlin UFO Mega Conference specializes in bringing you new people, offering new information and disclosure. 
All of this is offered at prices so low you can actually afford to be there. For instance, seven-night hotel packages, one or two people, start at just $320, inclusive. Education and disclosure is why the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference exists. Join us for all seven days or a half a week or just a day or two, but join us. Go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. Register now. The only thing keeping you from being with all of us is you. Just go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church, tonight, Don Schmidt, live from Roswell, New Mexico. And uh, this this announcement of, of ICER is a big deal. And we're going to continue uh, with this, the structure of the group. Uh, but before we do, Don, um, you could run for mayor of Roswell. You know that, right? Um, in fact, I know the mayor very well because <laughs> we're always discussing ways in which not you know the, the notion that we're always looking for ways to you know draw more people in the roswell but it's like how can you help the museum how can you do more for us how can we just further educate the public you i think to, uh, you know i think you introduced me to the mayor of roswell I, I believe you yes, did. I, I believe you I did. believe I we did. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was a, a breakfast. Yes, right? that, and that would have been Mayor uh, Dennis Kintime at that time. Yes, Correct. that's right. That's and right. He's now serving. He's now serving his second uh, term. So, man, that one of the coolest. He's, he, uh, he's uh, former FBI, and he actually was uh, pretty hard nosed on us at first, and I think mainly because of his his background, his training. But uh, as soon as we sat down with him, and uh, I think he he noted how serious 
and how professional we were regarding the subject that uh, he saw it a lot more than just any type of circus carnival atmosphere attracting tourists. Yeah, that uh, Roswell, um, I remember I went on uh, the local radio station there uh, one morning and and uh, and so I said hello to everybody. And I think earlier that week I was on uh, I was on coast and I said, OK, city of Roswell, I'm coming to town. Right. And then so right. um, I did that interview. And the next day after that, I was uh, rolling. No, no, it was that afternoon. So I was on the air that morning, but I'm rolling up the street on uh, uh, one of those segways, right? And I'm going up Main Street, and the crowds of, of people that are on both sides of the Jimmy Roswell loves you, right? Yelling for I just thought, <laughs> man, you know, what a great city. It, it, they, yeah, yeah. they really appreciate and you on the float, oh man! I mean, it's it you could run for mayor. You could run for mayor tomorrow, and uh, Roswell just loves Don Schmidt. So now um, they recognize. I'm, I'm saying they recognize, man. They they understand uh, what's uh, truly going on. Now back to Icer. Um, uh, what I had said before the break, and I mean this. I'm not being cavalier. Uh, the audience and myself, we want to know, you know, uh, who's the quarterback. You've got to have, uh, you know, you've got to have some players on the team and you've got to be able to name drop. Uh, who are some of the yes, prominent members yes. of ICER? Okay, well, our president would be Dr. Roberto Planotti from uh, San Marino. Probably one of the most famous ufologists throughout Europe and certainly Italy. Renowned as far as scientists who's been, who's devoted his uh, life to the study of UFOs, and uh, and rightfully so, that uh, you know that we would have selected him as as the president. Uh, we have uh, uh, Doctor Lakazar Filipov, who's a space astrophysicist, and uh, is with the Bulgarian Academy of Science, and in fact was involved with the training of even the Bulgarian astronauts during as far as his his term with their space program. Uh, we have Eamon Ansbro, who's an astronomer in Ireland with the SETI project. So uh, these are, you know, th three examples where in uh, uh, Dr. Panotti's case, yes, he's a renowned, he's a respected ufologist, whereas the others really have no UFO background whatsoever. But they understand, the answer, they understand life. Right, they understand life in in the Milky Way and 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 astronomy and the universe and and chemistry and the physics side of this, which is something that needs to be brought to the table. Precisely, precisely, because too often one becomes jaded, and it's no different than so many of the UFO conferences. You're you're preaching to the choir. It was one of the reasons that when I was invited to actually present a paper at the then PSYCOP, Committee for the Scientific Investigation of the Paranormal, the Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke organization at that time. And uh, I didn't hesitate because they were going to have an audience of, you know, hundreds of people that I could at least make an attempt to present my case. I mean, I realized I was going into a lion's den, but if you survive, then you've made progress because they didn't eat me alive. They didn't destroy me. They didn't, you know, chew me up and spit me out. In fact, uh, the media could not have been more respectful who happened to be there. And as a result, it wasn't like I walked out scarred and bloody as much as I felt that our case was so good that I could take it to, you know, the most hard-nosed debunkers in the world, and it would still stand on its own merit. Too many people in ufology, they, they seek to become celebrities, and they think that that's all they need to present as far as our case. No, if, if we haven't established enough of a UFO case in a court of law, just as be, you know, testifying before Congress, then we've been kidding ourselves. Then we have been chasing ghosts. 
Are you guys going to make an attempt at olive branches and uniting uh, the different uh, UFO groups uh, around the world and here in the United States? Yes, and for this reason, because as we even see now, the dissension, the detractors, those that are predicting gloom and doom, those that feel that they're going to be left on the, at the bus stop if there is any type of announcement, those that are still trying to jump on the bus and act like, yes, we were on the right side all along. It, uh, it just continues to demonstrate the level of pettiness and envy and jealousy. I mean, if you so much as write a book in the UFO field, you're a traitor because, hey, you're not starving like me. You're trying to actually make a buck and pay for your research. And, and I, for one, I've tired of that long ago because, sorry, it's like the old adage, a poor person is never going to help another poor person. And a poor ufologist isn't going to get much done in research if they don't have some funding. That's the way that it is. It's, it, and, yes. uh, and for me, I, I got to tell you, I, uh, I bought every UFO book that I could find. There, it, it, that's just what I did. And when something else was coming out, that included yours, right? Something else is coming out. I was there. Um, I got to a point at uh, Barnes & Noble across the street from my house. They didn't have anything left. Don, I bought it all. Wow, <laughs> all right. wow, you bought it all. My well, God. No, I did. I did. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't get enough of, uh, of, of the information. And there was another thing that I really appreciated um, in, in collecting books and reading them cover to cover is that I could fan them out in front of me and see the overlap of the information that was between them. And I appreciated yes. that, where I, I could see the the confirmation of different ideas, different theories, different uh, incidents, right? And they all started to overlap, and I could see the consistency yes. between yes. all of this. Yes, exactly, which is a wonderful, as far as analogy, as to if we were to collectively, you know, work together to try to finally you know, put pressure on. That's why as far as the, the act of investigation, okay, what have we accumulated except hundreds of thousands of case reports over the last 75 years? But then if we consider, well, who has had greater access to the information? Who has the technology? Who has the funding? Who possibly potentially has physical proof not, I mean, beyond photographic and gun camera footage, and as the Navy has presented in the last number of years, we need to stop pointing up at the sky and start pointing to Washington, pointing to the Pentagon, and saying, fess up. You have the answers, whatever they happen to be, but if you want to plead ignorance, then let's work together and finally determine what we're dealing with here. Now, what about, uh, what about experiencers and abductees? Are you collecting data on that, too, as well? I, 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 I feel that I've always been pretty much on the fence when it comes to abductees in that there's been so much contamination, so many books, so many personal accounts that... Even Heineck, we used to talk about you could take 100 people in a room and just about everybody is read or seen or heard, you know, so within their subconscious. And then with regression, hypnotic, you know, regression, you could make most anybody believe they had such an experience. The, the problem is that the cases are far from virgin or far from pristine at this point. And as a result, you know, I require that they are multi, multi witnessed multi-participant, and as old as possible. That's why the late 50s, early 60s, and through that time, those would be the, the, our best bet. And that's one of the reasons that like the, the Betty Barney Hill case still stands as strong as it does, because there was yeah. nothing else to influence it. The, uh, uh, when, when I'm asked that question uh, you know, about the big cases and, and what excites me, um, you know, and some of the obvious things, you know, to state like, you know, like Roswell or, or Malmstrom or, or thing, 
but there are there are cases that are so strong like Travis Walton, like Calvin yes. Parker, like Rendell yes. Shim, where yes. these people are still alive. Um, there is more information coming in today on Calvin Parker's case than there was when the incident actually happened, right? The, the, Additional witnesses, yes. And, and, I, and I, I consider these modern cases, even though, you know, Calvin Parker, that's almost 50 years ago now. 73, 1973, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, And, and uh, Travis, Travis would be 75 two yeah, years later. Yep, and uh, same thing with Rendlesham. Rendlesham was 1980, man. Yeah. That was it's, a long time. 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. I know, and I remember when it happened, and I will never forget, I was with Heineck at his home, and we, he, all of a sudden he starts playing this tape to us. And we're listening so attentively, and he was the first one to get it. And it happened to be Colonel Charles Holt, you know, talking, you know, in the woods that night as far as the recorded, as far as investigation of what they were, you know, going into the woods looking for. And the thought that it's now 41 years ago. My God. And so we, we, we have to believe that we've, you know, moved the ball down the field a little bit beyond that point. Because otherwise, just as with Roswell, we're still investigating 75-year-old cases because we haven't made any headway. But the difference with Roswell, and I could lump Rendell Shim into it just because of the wealth of eyewitnesses and the fact that it happened you know, over a period of nights. And in fact, as it's, it's turning out, it happened even an additional night that is now coming out with additional witnesses. But with Roswell, you're talking about hardware. You're talking about nuts and bolts. You're talking, once again, not something fleeting through the sky that now you see it, now you don't, but you're talking about something that the government has been sitting on all this time, and all they have to do is acknowledge, hey, we've got one, but we still can't find the on button. Have you read, you know, speaking of Roswell, have you read uh, Jacques and Paula's new book, Trinity? No, but I'm fully aware of the case, and, 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 and mainly for the fact that we interviewed the witness, Remy Babaka, over 25 years ago. And unfortunately, we walked away from it because he presented an a, a entirely different case. He claimed that it happened out on the plains of San Augustine and that it was 1947. And um, then when we received photographs of the, to us, what was immediately identified as the rudder flange of a windmill, and claiming that it was an artifact from the crash and that type of thing, and now it's 1947 and San Antonio, New Mexico. And so, um, again, we had talked to him 25 years ago, and um, we uh, dismissed it well, for the inconsistencies. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and, and many did. But uh, Jacques' research, and, you know, they've interviewed, you know, three witnesses now. Um, the... I, I don't think that, and I'm sure that you agree with me, I don't think Jock got involved. Uh, he was doing his own investigation into this, uh, and, and Paula was doing hers uh, independently. Um, and, and for Jacques, I know Jacques well enough uh, to say he's not going to get his hands dirty and, and present something unless... He was pretty confident about it. And I think that where they are today, the book is a good read. I, I, I strongly suggest uh, that you check it out. Um, but I, I would think that going back to these old cases, to your point, that we didn't think that we could go any further with the past. But now we've got a case from 1945, two years prior to Roswell, right after uh, the Trinity test. Um, that it appears that uh, there may have been something there. I have to uh, also cite, you know, another inconsistency that certainly if the military, in that case, the Army, mm -hmm. had any prior knowledge to some other experience and the idea that this would have happened just uh, a couple hours west of the Roswell incident, that the personnel at Roswell, when the rancher comes into town 
and, you know, presents all this wreckage, and they behaved as though this was, uh, you know, some new event that they had. It wasn't a case of where, oh, my God, another one. And uh, that the behavior, again, they acted in totally as if this was a new experience, unprecedented. And so I have a problem with that. But as I said, the fact that I had originally, I had given a talk in Ventura, California, and I was introduced to, uh, he said, he, he called, I, I may have misheard his first name, but it sounded like Ray Baca. And then it turned out it was Remy Baca. Okay. But that he they took me aside with him and he described not that it happened in San Antonio, but that it happened on the plains of San Augustine, another hour west. And not 1945, but 1947. And then after, he tried to convince us with photographs of this flange. I mean, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it. but No, I like, have. I have. And, and, and Jacques, yeah. this is what Jacques said uh, on this show a couple of weeks ago, that that, that piece was... Uh, that's man-made. That's from Earth. It wasn't from the craft. Yes, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And yet, the, the two, and they're not even brothers, but that they were presenting it as being from the crash. Well, he. This is what Jacques said um, in in the transcripts of uh, the translations of the interviews that this was used to uh, uh, move the craft. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, you know, possibly welded onto the craft so they could hoist it up onto the back of the flatbed. And that was kind of where my mind went with it, uh, went with it when, when Jacques was telling me. I don't think anybody is trying to say that, uh, certainly today, that that is, you know, from off world that it. Uh, well, it was, but, but it was one of the reasons that the piece was forwarded to Phyllis Buttinger as far as in Ohio. Mm -hmm. to have their lab do a actual analysis and testing as to whether it was terrestrial or not. So I hardly believe that they would have had it analyzed and tested if they weren't making such a claim. So I, 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 I'll give it another look. I will, you know, especially respect the fact, as I do, certainly above most other Jacques' involvement, though it's a major curiosity within the field. For someone who has demonstrated zero interest in crash retrievals, as our you know dear departed friend Len Stringfield, for having open you know that very possibility already back in the late seventies about the, the entire uh, crash retrieval situation and multiple stories at that time, uh, Jacques never batted an, an eye and. I, it wasn't a case of where he just dismissed it outright as much as maybe, well, you guys are working on it. You come up with something, let me know. Yeah, and, he, um, had, he had said, uh, uh, Jacques said on, on this program, it was about three years ago, he said uh, and it was just in passing, Don, right? And we're talking just like you and I are talking now. And he says, well, you know, uh, there have been crash retrievals and, and, and we have uh, uh, stuff in our possession. And I kept talking and, and, and it, it blew past me, Don, right? <laughs> I mm -hmm, didn't stop mm -hmm. on that. And I remember after the show, I, I was thinking to myself and I said to the audience, I said, did, did Jacques Vallée just say that we are in possession of a crashed flying saucer? as fact, right? So anyway, this became, uh, it was almost like urban legend, right? This statement that Jacques yes. had made on Fade to yes. Black. And I kept going back to that. So last week, here it is three years later, Jacques on the show. And I said, Jacques, when you said, you know, three years ago on this program that we were in possession of crash flying saucers, and was it this Trinity case that you were referring to then, and he said right. yes. Now I have yes, I have yes. interviewed him uh, many times, and and after that uh, conversation, Don, and um, he never went back to that point, and he never mentioned Trinity, and didn't talk about the investigation. He kept everything quiet. And I, I pressed him on all kinds of things. You know, what are you mm -hmm, working on? What's mm -hmm. the secret stuff, Jacques? You know, help a brother out, right? <laughs> and he never, well, he kept the investigation and, quiet. 
and very reminiscent of J. Allen Hynek. I'll give you a quick example, and that's why, if not for the fact that he told you it was about Trinity, that I would then suggest that maybe it was indeed his close colleague, his co-author, messenger, you know, as far as challenge of science, um, J. Allen Hynek. And I'll, I'll tell you the story that when Hynek's book, UFO Experience, Heineck was receiving an award, an author's award in Ohio for the book. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, you know, best book written by an author in the state of Ohio at that time. And he was there with his secretary, Jenny Zeidman, who just passed away uh, a couple of years ago, who was uh, also on a board of directors at QFOS and just a wonderful researcher. The whole... As far as coin helicopter case, I mean, she owned that case and did a masterful job on it. And they're sitting there at the table, and all at once, Alan, Dr. Heineck, slides over a piece of paper to Jenny. And she opens it up, and it says, we got a crash saucer. And Jenny, I mean, because here's Alan Hynek, who has never brought up this subject before, mm -hmm. she pulls out a piece of paper from her purse and she writes and she slides it over and, who told you this? And Alan writes below her notation, the Air Force. Really? And just at that moment, just at that moment, he's called up, you know, to the DS as far as to receive his award. He comes back. And Jenny, you know, it's like, okay, what else, what else? Right. And then Alan slides a note back, don't ever ask me again. Don't ever ask me. I never, I never wrote that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and, and tear up the note. Yes. Uh, so I, I can see that Jacques, that, that Alan Heineck would have, uh, that one person he would have told about that beyond his secretary, Jenny, Jenny Zeidman, he would have told Jacques. He would have told Jacques. And maybe that lit a fire, and he was just waiting for that one opportunity. And, you know, Jimmy, for, for many years we've had people, even the late Stan Friedman, our dear friend, that at a certain point he finally said, I'm going to leave you guys to solve Roswell. I'm going to leave you guys to finish it. I'm going to pass down the gauntlet because I'm getting older. I'm slowing down. I just don't have the energy, the stamina any longer. And you guys have demonstrated that you're right on it. And that Jacques may have felt all this time, well, you know, I don't need to get involved with Roswell. I don't need to get involved in, in Kecksburg or Aztec or anything else because it's being handled. But Trinity provided him with an opportunity. And I will never fault anyone for going to the scene of the crime and trying to determine reality or fiction. I was sitting... Uh, being proactive. Yeah, proactive. yeah. I was sitting with uh, Stanton... Uh, one afternoon, uh, we were alone and I go, so Stanton, and I do this all the time. I've done it with you. Stanton, what's the secret, man? What's the one case? Mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. the one? And he goes, come on, Jimmy, it's right in front of you. Roswell. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. it, you know how it's, it's, it's Roswell, you know, that, that Stanton, <laughs> that Stanton wave down. And, and that was, that was his gift to me. You know, don't let this go, man. Uh, the the case is Roswell. Everything else is out well, there, but here here's here's uh, here's another fly in the ointment. Just last year on Father's Day, so it's going to be about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and Donald Trump Jr. does his annual Father's Day interview with his dad, and what's the very last question? Dad, are you going to open the files on Roswell? You know, not. You know, bring out pieces of a weather balloon or a mogul or anything else. No, when are you going to open the files? And for his father to, without, you know, a snicker or a smirk, you know, making that comment, you know, I'm asked that question just about more than anything else. And you know who else made that reply, gave that same response? President Bill Clinton. Yes, he did. That he was asked about Roswell more than anything else. And then Trump adds, you know Millions of people go there because they want to be someplace important. Well, I could hardly, you know, believe that a balloon crash is somewhere important. 
And so if he painted, you know, again, he created that illusion that there's still a there there. There's still a truth that is being withheld. And then when Don Jr., you know, again, well, are you going to open the files? And he's, well, you know what he said. He said, I'm going to need to look into it. So in other words, there is still information being withheld. And as long as that's the case, I'm just going to pack up and go, well, mogul sounds good to me. That's fine with me. I'm just going to believe again the government or believe the Air Force who's been lying about this for all these years. So it's good enough. Good enough. Let's take no, our break. No, right. no. Yeah, that's right. Let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, live from Roswell, Donald Raymond Schmidt. More of a Don. After this short break, I'm your Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. Salt Lake City, Utah. Van Buren, Arkansas. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen until it's too late? We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So, log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos uncertainty and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market, we can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. <laughs> Thank <sighs> you. 
You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Now, our guest tonight is Don Smith. Don, I said Don. <laughs> I just changed your last name, man. That's that's how they pronounce it in England, so you're fine. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I'm thinking about food. So I jump over. I haven't eaten. Uh, it's 9 o'clock, okay? So I'm going on... Uh, not quite 12 hours, but certainly about about 10 hours, uh, 11 o'clock today, I had lunch. It's now 9 o'clock, and I'm not done with the show until 10, and this is the point of my day where I'm thinking about food. I literally haven't eaten anything in, in, in over 10 hours, and I jump over, Don, over to YouTube, into the YouTube chat, because I'm in, I'm in Twitter land uh, throughout the show uh, with you. Right. So I jump over there, and they're talking about food. Man, I just ordered pizzas. Oh, I'm having ice cream. I'm, just, I'm reading that. I'm like, <laughs> you guys can't do that. So I'm thinking about food, and I come back, uh, you know, really quick uh, to, to get back into the show. I forgot you were even the guest. Man, I'm thinking about hot fudge Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about pizza. Okay, now um, it's great to leave that impression. I appreciate that. So. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot who you was, and and you can blame all of that on on YouTube. So uh, one if of the if I start calling you George, then I'm returning. You to know Vegas, what? So that, okay, it, to, totally cool, man. <laughs> totally cool. Um, is is this? Uh, do you? When we, I, I keep going back to this report because there's so much anticipation here. It's like uh, Christmas Eve. Yes, yes. And I'm excited. I, It's probably, honestly, going to go the way of we're t- way you and I are way too used to disappointment in the world of UFOs. Um, and I could see it, honestly, going the way that uh, uh, Danny Sheehan. And how are we to second guess Danny Sheehan? He's been dealing with capitol hill and and the courts and and these subjects for a very long time he knows how it plays out do know washington as well as danny does nobody yeah. does nobody does and uh so when he says you know i think they're just gonna kick the can man they're gonna ask for more time uh they were already given 180 days and that 180 days was a gift it wasn't a demand this isn't in law this was just like a request you know, for, you know, a little research into the, there wasn't any pressure put on uh, uh, the director of national intelligence. There wasn't any, you know, uh, uh, any penalties if he doesn't deliver a report. No, no, so no. if you come back and ask for or more any time. any offer of protection for any witnesses who uh, had security oaths, who would like to testify behind closed doors. Uh, I mean, none of that was afforded. No, you're right. And and so certainly if there's going to be a reference to a couple of cases, the Nimitz will be there, the Roosevelt will be there, maybe this newest uh, uh, incident in July of 2019, again, in the same general area off of San Clemente Island, uh, off the coast there in Southern California, San Diego. But do, do you do you do you expect uh, any references to to Roswell? No, not for a second. And when Leslie Keen and and Ralph Blumenthal, when they did that interview with Senator Harry Reid, mm-hmm. and they reported to the New York Times that he talked about the military being in possession of hardware, of physical proof. And the fact that he then walked that back. Did he get that proverbial phone call? Did he feel that he spoke out of turn, that he said something he shouldn't have? Or um, was he misquoted? Well, both Keenan and Blumenthal say absolutely not. 
They're not backing down. But granted, the Times did uh, retract that. That was a statement. full. Uh, that was a full backpedal retraction. Total. And the fact that supposedly Reed went so far as to suggest that Lockheed, you know, was the source that like, it was his impression that Lockheed has possessed uh, such material all these years. Well, then I, I, I look at that and I go, my. When I'm asked today, where do you think the Roswell wreckage is? And I will just flatly state, I don't believe the government has it. I don't believe the military has it. I think that may also be some of the uh, concern right now, and that Eisenhower certainly was correct when he warned us about the military-industrial complex, Mm -hmm. that need we be reminded that the military-slash-government doesn't manufacture anything as to tanks, ships, planes, missiles, that type of thing. Boots, everything contracted uniforms. out to the private sector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. contracted out to yeah. the private sector. And the same thing being with the material at Roswell. All they could do is bury it, sit on it. But if they wanted answers, they had to assimilate it into the private sector for analysis and the potential for reverse engineering. And so through the years, We've had first-hand witnesses at Patel, Boeing, Lockheed, RAN, Hughes, uh, General Electric, uh, Bureau of Standards, all talking about testing the Roswell wreckage, not by name, but the fact that they had this material that was beyond, you know, the scope of our technology, and they were asked for answers by the military. Okay, doesn't mean it was ever returned because they would play that same game. Hey, still working on it. We need another year. We'll report to you in the next year. Hey, hey, more time, more time, more time. And it's because the, the, the government always provides you with all the time you need because in the meantime, the meter keeps running. The money keeps you know, keep the fun, funneling down. And just like SETI, it's lifetime employment to come up with nothing. You know, and, we're and, looking. And, we're looking. And no paper trail. See the the yeah, other, exactly no paper trail. And we keep talking about well, FOIA man, FOIA. You can't FOIA a private corporation. I didn't get exactly, <laughs> Jimmy. You cannot FOIA. And it's another safeguard: the fact that they turn it over to private corporations, and we can't touch them. It's gone. It's gone. That 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 connection is is Black over. Hole. Yeah, yeah, it's over. Yes. Now, I wanted to ask you, uh, this news story broke earlier today, and you probably haven't heard it yet, but when I tell no. you what I'm about to tell you, you're going to flip the frig out, okay? Now, check this so I out. I need to sit down, right? Okay, your, I'm sitting. Your old buddy, Ray Santilli, is back in the news. Oh, yes. Did, yes. Did you hear about this? No, I heard something, uh, but keep going. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But, it's uh, okay. It, it, it just broke. But Ray Santilli says that uh, the original film that disintegrated, right, that, that yes, he had purchased. Right, and they and, uh, had to do a recreation. Right, right, right. He is auctioning off one single frame of the original film of the body. And it's up for auction right now. Minimum opening bid of, I don't know where he came up with this number, but this is it. $1,192,416.07. That's that's the opening bid number. He says that it is the frame from the original. I read all of his quotes uh, in this press release. This is the uh, one of the surviving few frames of the film, and that he has uh, the winner of the bid will get CIA documents proving this is real. Now, um, I've got a picture. Um, if uh, there's a thing called the internet, Don, the internet, it's going to be big. And there's this thing called Twitter um, on on the internet that you can get on your interbox. And oh, if, I have if, to talk to my broker. Yeah, yeah. I, thank uh, you. If, if you go there and you go to my Twitter feed, you can see uh, the image that I posted of this original frame, the alleged, I'm going to say. Um, and it's here, and with this uh, alien body on on the slab, it's right here. What? What? Okay, so 
I'm going to use a bad word, Don. Don't don't hold this again. Don't hold it against me. Bullshit or not? Well, we were the when they even presented the autopsy video because it was always nothing more than a video. Even when they claimed that they had fo- uh, frame footage analyzed and that it dated circa 1947, mm-hmm. it was just leader strip, leader frame. Mm-hmm. That's right. It, 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 it was, they were never able to demonstrate that it was actually any frame footage. Okay, fine. So, I mean, for all the debate and the fact that they were trying to play this up as the Roswell autopsy film. And we got them to back down immediately because, first of all, we were able to demonstrate that, I mean, we did, as they had requested, show it to all of your Roswell witnesses. See if any one of them confirmed that this is what they observed back in 1947. And not a one. Not a one. They looked at it and went, my God, not even close. Not even close. And then we quickly, no, you are not going to call this the Roswell Alien autopsy film. So now it just stands as the alien autopsy. Okay, fine. And they've even changed the date. It's now May of 1947. They moved it up a few months, Mm -hmm. month and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they they at least cooperated that Ray, and at the time, his supporters, they did cooperate with us as far as to that extent. But here for all these years, and then for uh, Spiro as far as the magician and his demonstrating that uh, this was all on a lark, that, you know, he put this together trying to demonstrate that he could get away with it. And as a magician, as far as just putting together props, that he even, you know, was able to demonstrate how to create the latex body and the incisions are almost done with the hand in the foreground because latex tends to pucker as you cut it, unlike actual tissue, biological tissue, which will separate very clean, very openly, that type of thing, on and on and on. But the point being, why now, once again, is it just also playing up on all the publicity for the time being, or is this going to be part of the distraction, part of the diversion? Now, what if, what if this is real? What if what I am looking at here and everybody else, you can go to my Twitter feed right now, everybody, mm-hmm. at J mm-hmm. Church Radio. You can see the image. What if this is a an alien body? What if this is the real deal? What if? I mean, what if, right? What if? Jimmy, you are, you know, speaking my language because that is the one thing as investigators, and I remind journalists, all the time, that one needs to step back no matter what one's conclusion and still ask, what if? What if the witness is still telling me the truth? What if I am the one that is misjudging, misinterpreting? I mean, it's their experience. In this case, it's, it's, it's a film. It's a frame from a film. Okay, fine. And I don't question that it looks like it may be genuine in that capacity. And what if, what if, what if, what if, yeah, yeah, what if, what if, the onus though, I mean, and as the, as the old saying, an antique, a frame of film, a painting is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. But the point is, is, we, in this case, it's $1.2 million. And there's, there's another, there's another caveat here. Kit Green, in right. his email correspondence with his with his buddies, put off and, and the crew, right. Um, right. stated right. to them that he was shown images at the CIA of an alien autopsy uh, purported to be mm-hmm. from Roswell. And when he looked at those images, story, right. right, you do. And when he mm-hmm. looked at those images and then saw Ray Santilli's fake film, they were the same, right? And now, now Kit, Kit's a yes. smart guy. He's going to remember the image that he was shown at CIA. Of course he is. And then he sees Ray Santilli's film. He's like, holy crap, right? Okay. Well, 
when you look at this single frame and it's you can it's got the the film the sockets or whatever you call the you know the holes on the side uh, uh whatever you, i don't know what do you call those what what do you what do you call those anyway um, well, the, the sprocket hole the sprocket holes because on the projector it's a sprocket and yeah it's, it's a turn, sprocket so, yeah okay um this image is nearly identical at least the body uh that you see here in this image is nearly identical to ray santilli's film there's some equipment mm -hmm. in the background there's some things the phone is on the wall you can see the phone cord hanging down in this particular shot um so you can see if if this is real how ray recreated it like he said right he built the set around right. the original film. um I could see why Kit would recognize this. I see this, and I'm like, okay, that's the alien autopsy film. It's, the body is nearly identical. So I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is Ray playing everybody? And at this point, with everything that went down with the hoax and the way that uh, the money grab, right, the, the, the grifting, that Ray did on the world for tens of millions oh, of dollars. Well, exactly. What when, he got from Fox television oh, alone. Just uh, that. I heard it was 75 million. So would he step back and put his toe back in that water and fleece again? Would he grift again? I don't think that he would. Mate, but I don't know. I Well, I don't know I'm if puzzled. you've ever talked to him, ever met him. I, n I never have. I mean, I've always relied on uh, like Philip Mantle, right, and his colleagues, mm -hmm. and as much as Michael Hessman from Germany, right, uh, always supported Santilli, but everything has been so quiet for now over fifteen years regarding this. Yeah, and is is Santilli taking advantage of the present situation, or is somebody? Is somebody prodding? Is somebody encouraging him to do that? Because it once again is contrary to the actual eyewitness testimony of Roswell. That was always the problem to begin with, with the autopsy situation. And here again, it raises its ugly head, so to speak. And it may have nothing more than the intent that it just that there are those gullible UFO believers again who believe anything just to make their case. And I've been there myself. I don't deny that because we want to finish this. We want answers. But when things come back after they supposedly have been thoroughly disproven, and it's like, well, let me you know, wave another carrot and see if you bite once again. So I'm going to need a lot more information and... Um, I had heard that in passing through the rumor mill, and now you just confirmed it. That that's exactly the situation. Now, but, um, I'm to going... say that it has anything to do with Roswell, I say absolutely not, because it in no way depicts or matches what our our wit eyewitnesses have described to us now for over thirty years. Um, I am emailing you right now. Okay. You've got your computer Good. there. You've got a way to check your email live on the air. Uh, no, I don't. Not in the hotel room here. No. Oh man, Don Schmidt. Emails. I know. Emails. I know. Emails know. going to be big someday. I'm. It's going to be living big. Living out of my briefcase again. So yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm sending you uh, the frame. I'm sending you the image. So you've got it. Great. And uh, excellent. You, you just check that out. It's pretty trippy, man. And uh, when when I looked at it, look, I don't I don't buy anything. Okay, I don't. But be but be careful as far as any time we cite one of the intelligence agencies, because by the very definition of intelligence, it's covert. It's essentially uh, it it basically is BS. Well, it's it, like it, it, I, like I said, this is if, if there's anything that makes me go hmm with this, I just go back to Kit Green's original statements because look, this is what I said. Um, I said this to everybody too. When I read the exchange between Putoff and Kit Green and others in right, that group, right. and I'm I'm reading that, I'm like, Kit can't be that stupid. 
is he saying that he believes that the Roswell film is authentic, right? And I went through all of that in my mind. I thought, Kit cannot be that dumb. Anybody who looks at the Roswell film knows that it's not uh, 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 real, that that was the, uh, the original Especially alien. Especially when someone comes forward and confesses to uh, as far as the, the fakery, right? Yes. And, and then Kit uh, clarified everything and said, no, 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 I was shown images at, C- at the CIA. And so when I saw the film, I knew that what I had been presented earlier and what is in this hoaxed film are identical. So there's, there's something to this. There's something to this. Well, I can... See, this is still reminiscent of when that... Uh so-called CIA agent by the name of Chase Brandon. Yeah, What's yes. interesting is that the opposite of the producer of, of Stan Friedman's film, UFOs Are Real, which was Brandon Chase, and that he would claim that he was in the vault at the CIA and he saw, you know, the entire Roswell file. Also keeping in mind the CIA did not exist at the time of Roswell. So why would anything, why would they possess anything regarding the case? Just what? knowing how these the departments work and how they don't share. For example, the NSA doesn't share anything with the CIA and vice versa. And the FBI, throw the FBI in for the, you know, you know, into the mix if you'd like. Whatever happened to Chase Brandon? I mean, he, yes, st- I know. he, he stirred the well, pot he, there he for a, a minute. He, woo. He did, but he's also, he's also a novelist. He, he writes fiction. As far as that we were able to determine back then, he was writing spy novels. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say this. I I thought. <laughs> I thought at some I know point where you're that going. <laughs> uh, I thought that Chase Brandon and Richard Hoagland were related and separated at birth. <laughs> they had the same hairstylist. I'm just saying that that coincidence. Uh, Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You still respect me, Don, know. don't you? You still respect me. We both me. know Richard, so he knows we're kidding. So I'm just, I know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. But they. But <laughs> if, you, if you go back, you look at Chase Brandon's <laughs> pictures and Hoagland at the same time, right back in that period. Dude, they got their hair cut at the same joint. I'm just saying. I'm. Just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, Don, you are the very best, man. You are the very best. I can't wait to get you back on the show. And uh, what I would like to do um, is uh, invite you back sometime in early May after we get June behind us. And I want your comments on on how things are are hopefully spinning out of control. But uh, I can't exactly. wait for your insight. And what looks like maybe as far as... Uh, uh, pending at that time, if we feel any more confident as to any form of a breakthrough, or if, uh, just as you mentioned, Danny Sheehan, that we realize that, no, it's going to be the same, same old, same old. And uh, we hope not, that uh, maybe the, the mold is about to be broken, and we're about to finally be taken into you know, their confidence. But then there needs to be action, there needs to be hearings, and we need to be part of that. That's the one thing um, out of all of this, and I'm not, I'm not in any way kidding about this. The one thing that needs to happen is we need to have hearings. We need yeah. to have some yeah. responsibility on both sides taken, right? Where uh, these witnesses come forward, speak under oath, right? You're not on camera. This isn't History and Channel. We- and Steve Bassett, bless his heart, I mean, and we, we showed it could be done when we had the citizens hearing now eight years ago, right there at the Washington Press Club. So it could be, you know, it'd just be one phone call to someone like Steve Bassett, and he could put the whole thing together. I can give you seven days of witnesses <laughs> from all around the world, and I sure we would contribute to that as far as, as to our f- fullest extent. Steve deserves it. And so many other researchers uh, that have been uh, doing this for a very long time 
all deserve it too as well. And let's see. And talk about somebody who hasn't really made a dime for all of his efforts, and that is Steve Bassett. People can love or hate him, but my God, talk about just full devotion, commitment to uh, you know get all of us the truth regarding this subject. And an all-around cool guy. All around. All around. Don, thank you so much. Safe travels back home. And uh, yes. uh, I, I just can't wait to get you back on next month and and uh, get your reaction, whatever that reaction is going to be. But uh, thank you so much. And again, thank you for everything that you have done for this community. Thank you so much, sir. Well, you are so as far as uh, wonderful as far as in providing all of us with this venue we love your show. We love you, Jimmy. And just, you know, keep leading on. We're right there with you. Thank you so much. You're the best, Don. Thank you so much, man. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, Jimmy. Talk to you soon. Look forward to it. Donald Raymond Schmidt. And again, I got to thank Don for the fine box of hair care products that arrived at the studio today. Don Schmidt, incredible. Okay, ICER, I will get everybody the information as it develops with ICER. This is an incredible development for our community. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Stay with me. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church, and I'll be at the UFO MegaCon this June 6th through the 12th, 2021, in Laughlin, Nevada. The Laughlin UFO MegaCon is unique. It's seven days of education and disclosure. It's unlike all other UFO conferences. The Laughlin UFO Mega Conference specializes in bringing you new people, offering new information and disclosure. All of this is offered at prices so low you can actually afford to be there. For instance, seven night hotel packages, one or two people start at just $320 inclusive. Education and disclosure is why the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference exists. Join us for all seven days or a half a week or just a day or two, but join us. Go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. Register now. The only thing keeping you from being with all of us is you. Just go to LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of Fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. 
That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. So funny. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Don Schmidt, the absolute very best. One of the coolest guys ever. If you get a chance, if you you know, and and he's around, and and you get a chance to say hello, you you will understand exactly what I'm saying. One of the one of the coolest guys uh, I've uh, come to know. Um, uh, what I was going to say. Oh, somebody just posted in in <laughs> over in the YouTube chat, which is one of the funnest places uh, to hang out. I would suggest to everybody, split your screen, get a couple tabs open, have a tweet deck on one side, you know, the Spreaker chat, and then have YouTube right there and just go at it, man. It is it's too funny. But somebody just said, Jimmy's commercials have commercials. <laughs> That's done by design. Come on, man. You don't think I know what I'm doing? Of course my commercials have commercials. And then somebody said, and this is great. Um, uh, Oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. <laughs> that was good. I talked to a uh, Billy Carson earlier today. We had a phone call and he called and I said, Hey Billy, what's up? And he said, Hey, what's going on? And I said, Oh, I messed up. And he said, what's that? And I said, Oh, I didn't answer. Oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. <laughs> He's just cracking up. Uh, that's funny that, uh, I got to see that in YouTube. All right. Open lines, 747-228-2051, 747-228-2051. And uh, let's see here. I've got a bunch of calls lined up. Let's see who is up first. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Where are you calling from, Jeffrey? Bountiful, Utah. Where? Bountiful, Utah. Bountiful. Is that a city, or you're just saying that in general? Just saying that in general. Okay, fair enough, Jeff. Fair enough. What's five on your mind, star. Jeff? Five, five star. What's that? Five star. Oh, five general. star. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I'm actually going to agree with you there. What's on your mind tonight, Jeffrey? Not much, but just want to say that I love your program. That's it? That's it? That's it, Jeff? You got through on the phone lines? Hey, you know, I got to say, uh, we love you too, Jeffrey. But did you hear uh, Don's uh, 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 conversation tonight? Yeah, I love Don. He's a good, he's a good friend of mine. How'd you meet him? Down there in Roswell. Okay. 1914. 1947. Oh, you met him in 1947. <laughs> you bet. Okay. All you right. Bet. All right. You? All right. 
So uh, uh, if you met Don in 1947, how old were you? Uh, minus 1969, March 11th. <laughs> That's a good answer, Jeff. Hey, man, listen, have a good night, and thank you for calling in and saying that you appreciate the show, man. I seriously mean that. Thank you so much. You too, you too brother. Right on. You. Yeah, right on, Jeffrey. That's a, that's a great phone call right there. Thank you so much for that, Jeffrey. And, uh, uh, yeah, 1947. 70, how many years ago is that now? Right. It's uh, it's it's really funny to me that um, we are talking each year. It's the 50th anniversary of Roswell. It's the uh, it's the it's the 60th. It's the 70th. Man, 75. Man, that is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. All right. Let me see who I've got up next. Man, the calls are coming in. Okay, look, uh, everybody, I'm just letting you know, I'm manning the phones alone, okay? This is uh, this is moving along a little bit too rapidly here. Okay, let's see who is up next. I'm going to go here in order. I'm going to get them all in. I'm going to get them all in right now. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, this is Phil the Stalker. Oh, Phil the Stalker. Right yeah. on. How you doing, Phil? Who are you? Oh, I'm Phil the Stalker. It's been like 25 years on the internet, so I don't want to change my name, but I'm getting a little too old for it. It's a funny name. Oh, it's, stick with it, man. 25 years, Phil the Stalker, you own it, bro. You own it. Oh, I did. I had <laughs> I had it commercialized. <laughs> did you? <laughs> right I thought on. it had a great ring for the... It, 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 it does have a, a, a great ring to it. Um, Phil, you've been hanging out for a while now and, and I appreciate, um, uh, not only your intelligence, but your wit and your sarcasm and, uh, and, and seriously, I recognize, and I see that. Um, but what do you think, uh, let me ask you this, uh, the run, uh, fade to black is fun every night, no matter what we do. And we always learn something, but this last six months, uh, with the run of the shows and, and where things have gone, and everything in the UFO community going down at the same time, it's uh, it's been it's been pretty fun, hasn't it? Oh yes, because of this COVID virus, I think we need the fun, and that's why I'm here every night. It's it's a a, a break away from the, the 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 mill or whatever you want to call it, running the mill, uh, uh, the grind, the mill grind. It's it's a it's it's a way to get away from that with open minded people. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, the one thing that has helped me get through the last year and a half is this show, is you, right? It's the audience. That's what I'm stuttering when I'm trying to say. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> but but it's really true. It's our sca- rest of you. It is. It's been. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, there's no question about that. I don't know but where. But I do think it has. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I start, we're, we're talking on different frequencies here, and, and uh, I'm not used to this telephone uh, delay. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're on the same page is what I was going to say. Now, Phil, uh, for, for everybody in YouTube and for the rest of the audience, I mean, everybody knows who you are now. Uh, where, where, <laughs> where does Phil the Stalker reside? What state? Let's just start there. Well, okay, state's good, Ohio, because I don't want to be stalked myself. Right. Um, and what part of uh, Dayton, right? Uh, Patterson, let's say Kelly's Island. Let's say a, uh, an ex- uh, unique place like Kelly's Island, Ohio. Have, uh, did you go to Kings Island? Uh, no, not Kings Island. Um, I'm, I, I was saying Kelly's Island. No, but I know. But are you ha- asking if I've been to Kings Island? Yes. No, but I've been to Cedar Point. You've been. No. Uh, <laughs> Wow! The the, wow! Yeah, you, yeah roller coaster capital of the world. You just dropped Cedar Point on Fade to Black. I, that is just oh yeah, absolutely awesome, man. <laughs> and I didn't even think of it. Yeah, geez. Yeah, well done, well played. Hey, well, Phil, thank you for uh, taking the, the time to call in. I can't wait to jump over to YouTube 
and uh, and see everybody's reaction. But uh, thank you yeah, so you much, man. <laughs> yeah, I thought some people would want to hear me and see what I sound like. That, that, you know that's what they're talking about right now. I have to go back and scroll back and see what all that chat's about. I'll talk to you. Phil, you're the best, man. Thank you yeah. so much. Great. Thanks a lot. That is just awesome, Bye-bye. Phil. I'm serious about this. Phil the Stalker just called in to fade to black, and it doesn't get any better. i got to take a peek over here. Let's see. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now we know where Phil is. Aha. Yes, it is Ohio. Let's keep the calls going. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi. Hi. Who's this? This is Kevin out of New Jersey. Kevin out of New Jersey. How are you doing tonight, man? Everything good? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks for asking. How are you? I, I'm, I just had Don Schmidt on the show for two hours. I am I am absolutely wonderful. What's on your mind tonight, Kevin? Yeah. Um, I was just uh, I'm a little bit on the online UFO community, and uh, I don't know if you heard about this guy on Reddit, Throwaway Alien, and he six years ago he made the prediction about UFO stuff going down in. Uh, july of this year and he made his second post like yesterday i was wondering if you heard about that no i haven't what's his name throw away alien on reddit throw away alien okay i am going to uh check this out after the show tonight and this is on reddit and this is the other thing kevin uh now that you mentioned this live on the air uh, all of the fader knots and, and Twitter and everything else is going to light up about this. So I will get uh, all of the information <laughs> now. Uh, but, and I appreciate that. My question to you is what do you think is going on? Do you think it's authentic? I'm not sure. It's kind of suspicious that he six years ago, he said uh, that there was going to be some real big stuff going down with disclosure, uh, you know, next month. And, uh, you know, he made a second post yesterday and he's like, I don't know what's going on, but it's suspicious is all. It reminds me of just by you saying it like this in this fashion reminds me of John Teeter. And that is still one of the most fascinating stories that went down on the internet and will continue to be the gift that keeps on giving. But throwaway alien said that twenty July of twenty twenty one was going to be the year, and he said that six years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am going to look into all of this. I'm watching. I'm watching Twitter now, and they are very quick. And I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to look into this right after the show. I'll make some comments right, tomorrow night. You, you're the best, man. I appreciate it, Kevin. That, no, you. That's appreciate a, the show. You're the best, man. Thank you so much. Take care. You too. It's time to fade to black. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, everybody out there, um, throw away alien on Reddit six years ago said that July of 2021 was going to be the year. That's very interesting. So I want everybody uh, to get back to me. And uh, let me know what is going on with that and what uh, what does everybody know. That's a very interesting. Throw away alien on Reddit. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? I'm Dennis here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Jimmy. How are you? How's Coeur d'Alene? Oh, it's pretty. It's beautiful day out today. I went to Spokane and it was nice. Yeah, Coeur d'Alene. Thanks for Coeur Thanks for asking. <laughs> Coeur <d'Alene. laughs> Yeah, right. it's a weird French French name. Huh? It's weird. Yeah. My daughter went to Coeur d'Alene Elementary School. How really? How, yeah. How crazy is that? Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. I always want. I was like, man, what a great name, Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> and you know what was really strange? That whole uh, alien ET connection with a Coeur d'Alene and Barack Obama. Do, do, yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're really up on things. Oh, this is man. a hot spot up here, Jimmy. I've gone out in the backyard yep. and had UFOs sitting out in the backyard here at right downtown. 
I'm right next to the freeway, a 90 going by Mm -hmm. in my house, and I sat out on the patio, and they're over in the Yakima Indian Reservation by Jim, James Gilliland's place, so you can see them in the west, northwest, and they're all over the place. They'll show up. It's really weird. Uh, I've done experiments to draw them in, and... uh, it's really weird. I think they can pick up on your thoughts and your motives. Well, what did you make of, I forget his name, uh, uh, the resident there of Coeur d'Alene that wrote that huge document up and then went to the white house, threw it over the fence, got arrested, um, wanted Obama to read, uh, everything. And, and he wrote in there, he said, man, everybody in Coeur d'Alene's an alien, right? (laughs) And (laughs) it's, Yeah, we've had the weirdest sightings. I could tell you stuff that would seem so outlandish that a person might not believe you, so I just keep my sightings to myself, the things that have happened here. But I know this place is a hot spot there around, as well as Bigfoot out in the woods out here, too, as well. Well, you guys guys are so remote up there, and it's beautiful, and you have the lake and, and... But yeah. uh, you have the opportunity for everything to happen at the same time. And I totally agree with you. Um, uh, he had said um, uh, in this uh, document that he wrote up for Obama, he said that uh, everybody at his church, the pastor at his church, was a shape shifting <laughs> reptilian. That is weird. Uh, that's I'm, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. I've only been up here since '99. Here, my dad's house, he, you know, was gifted to me because everyone died off. Right. I'm 67 years old. Well, his so name. I'm, I'm here alone, you know. So his, I, his I've na- never seen. But uh, go ahead, go ahead. His name was Kyle Odom, K Y L E Odom, O D O M. Yeah, Kyle Odom. Interesting. And, yeah, he was born and raised in North Idaho. And uh, and he wrote this manifesto, and I'm trying to. Uh-huh. The whole thing is online. You can go and read it. I'm looking at it. I here. will follow that up. Yeah, Kyle Odom, 21 pages of crazy. You need to go and read it. He's a well-written guy, and he's pretty smart. Yeah, he's pretty. I smart. will follow your advice, sir. I just want to make two quick uh, comments and. I agree. I'm on Dr. Greer's side because these uh, life forms have come into the military installations, like at Maelstrom in 1967, I think it was, yeah. and shut down the facility. You, you're on top of this stuff better than I am, and um, yeah, so they've shown that they're not hostile, you know, in a lot of ways, and they're they're showing us, you know, hey, you know, we we got the power to. Uh, override any negative stuff you want to pull you know these warmongers so i that so i have to agree with dr greer and and uh, one other thing i'll switch and get off and let the fans on uh your guitar aficionado i used to go to see all the old bands i'm 67 so back in the late 69 68 70s and i saw all the guitar players live most of them and i'm going to tell you what johnny winter was without a doubt superior to all of them slide John- guitar and all aspects he's without a doubt the greatest guitar player i ever saw yeah man johnny winter man and you know what he had that hair he right? looks so cool he looks so cool <laughs> he, no, he was yeah, i know yeah any yeah, guitar yeah. player will tell you that johnny winter was a player's player and we yeah. all appreciated <laughs> sure uh, everything that he did his brother edgar too though you know that yes, sir. is absolutely incredible. Uh, thank you Mr. so much. Talent. Yeah, what's your name One again? One last thing, Jimmy. I got I got to talk to him. I went to the Long Beach Arena in '75, and I pulled the curtain. I was one of the first fans in. The back door opens up, and like 50 people come in. There's limousines and everything. He's in the middle there with a girl on each one of his arms, and he comes walking right over to me. I said, Johnny, Johnny, he's my hero. So uh, he come over and he was the coolest, nicest man, you know, and he looked so cool. I couldn't believe it. No, so I'll quit hogging time, sir. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we love Coeur d'Alene down here. Thank you so much. I wonder what uh, Johnny Winter was wearing. That dude could dress. That dude played the part. 
There was no question about it. Let's uh, go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Jimmy freaking Church. How's it going, man? This is E-Honda 420 on YouTube. E-Honda 420. What's the 424 again? Out. This is who I am. E-Honda, I've got uh, two, three minutes. What's on your mind? Uh, just a question for you and a quick story. Okay. Uh, quick story first. I'll, I'll go with with, with your uh, your last caller. The not the caller. The uh, the guy that you had, Don Schmidt. Yes. He was talking about Lockheed Martin. I saw what could only be described as a UFO because I didn't see anything else other than the, it was unidentified. It was flying and it looked like an object. You know what I mean? Okay. And it was it turned out right by like if you look at it on a map, right by a Lockheed Martin facility. And I always thought, like when I learned that, that it has to be either recovered technology or just secret technology that the government developed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know what you think about that. Yeah, I've seen a few of those uh, photographs as well. Um, Here in Southern California, uh, there are a bunch of uh, research areas out in in the desert, uh, very close to here in Lockheed Martin. Of course, Skunk Works is out there. Uh, Raytheon and uh, Northrop Grumman, where they would set up these. And when you look at the photographs of them from the ground and from the air, uh, some of this stuff looks like it could be an alien craft. And they would set them up out there uh, for uh, cross-section analyzing for radar signatures. Um, And they would have these weird... um, uh, they have, uh, it looked like an obelisk, uh, these triangle uh, podiums that they would set them on. And the triangle podiums, like a stealth fighter, right, that same idea, would be invisible to the radar. And then they would have these, and, and I, would, I would look at this and go, what, what is it that they need a radar signature on? That looks like a flying saucer to me. So what is it that is happening here? So, yes, I've, I've seen that. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I've always identified it as a uh, um, possibility of being an actual flying saucer, but a, a recreation of one. And they're out there testing it because they know that this stuff is flying around um, in our airspace and they need to be able to detect it on radar. So yes, uh, Ihana, I've seen, I've seen the images. I don't know if it's an actual craft or they were using a model of a craft, of a design, and trying to figure out how to see it. But yes, I've seen dozens and dozens of photographs from different corporations in different areas out here in the desert. So I've got I've got 60 seconds. What was your second part? Well, I, I don't know. The thing that I saw, it wasn't a picture, it was in real life, and there was no way, and you know what, that that could have been anything but either a test thing or a space alien in a ship. But anyway, uh, my question was to you about where do you get all your great guests from? Is it just because you've been doing it for so long and people just contact you and you have a plethora of people to pick from? Or is there like a selection process or how does that work? You know what? You know what's cool about where I am today? I have the most amazing contact list in my cell phone. It would freak you out. Come up to me at a conference one day, and I'll let you uh, scroll through it. Have a great night, E. Honda. Behave and be well, 420. You too, my good sir. I hope you have a great night. (laughs) You too, man. Thank you so much. That's a great way to end the show right there. And uh, wouldn't you love to check out my contact list in my cell phone? Oh, you have no idea. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Thank you to Don Schmidt. What a great night tonight. I always expect that with Don. It's always so much fun. Don Schmidt. Tomorrow night right here, Sean Stone. Fade to Black's executive producers, Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network and syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. 
tomorrow night right here, Sean Stone. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. It's time to fade to black. <laughs>